So welcome back. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed the panel session. I did. Um, and during this uh, breakout session, I'd like to um, extend a little bit the, the message and the conversation with some some points which I've probably already raised during the, the panel, but just expanded, um, really speaking about uh, what is a data exchange platform technology, um, why it is uh, being used by very different organizations in different geographies, each of them uh, willing to reach certain uh, objectives. Um, and I'll develop this as with a few a few examples, but globally, what they all want to 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 achieve is to have an impact on their competitive competitiveness globally. So, but before um, before we dig into the subject, I'd like to maybe uh, share a little bit of information about uh, about DAOX very quickly. So, uh, DAOX is a company that was founded in 2015. Uh, um, home based in in France, uh, but we also with uh, uh, offices and a presence in Montreal and Tokyo uh, next year. Um, uh, our business has a global reach uh, 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 with uh, uh, activities and clients in in Europe. We also have Japan actually as our second largest market after after Europe, and also North America and Middle East. Uh, the company has been. Um, um, recognized um, since the inception of the company as a as a pioneer and, and innovator, uh, we've got a number of awards uh, in various uh, places in the world. And one important uh, one that we like to uh, um, highlight is the fact that the World Economic Forum has named us a tech pioneer, uh, which gives us the opportunity to participate. Uh, and to contribute to a number of uh, work groups, especially uh, those related to data policy. And we've been invited, for example, uh, in, in Davos uh, meeting this year, um, the annual meeting from the World Economic Forum, uh, to, to speak about data exchange. It was uh, amazing to see that uh, um, uh, four, four or five sessions um, were dedicated at Davos on the, the very topic of, of data exchange, which really means it's, it's become a mainstream subject. And um, so uh, we've also been speaking uh, at the G G7 summit um, uh, in other global uh, events. And also we are, uh, as DAOX, uh, we are contributing and, and leading the uh, um, the data exchange services working group at Gaia X, uh, which is a very key and important uh, uh, European uh, association, which also has a global reach with non European uh, organizations participating to it, um, uh, addressing and defining um, uh, the, the technical frameworks and trust framework and uh, reference architecture where um, data exchange plays a, a key role. Um, so, um, we are also working um, in many different industries, um, uh, which also speaks by itself that the, uh, in every industry today, there are needs expressed and initiatives that are related to sharing and exchanging uh, data uh, across uh, sector, across geographies. Um, in order to create uh, to create value, and we are accompanying a number of those organizations, those industry sectors. I'll share uh, a few examples of uh, real life uh, initiatives and projects. Um, that being said, uh, I'd like to uh, share a few information regarding um, the, the value proposition of DAOX. So uh, DAOX is focusing on providing technology solution. Uh, which is a, a custom branded uh, SaaS platform, so which is made available to organizations, whether private or public or consortia, um, that are engaged, that are willing to either distribute data, source data, commercialize data, and, and also orchestrate data ecosystems. And I'll give a number of examples of that. But the focus really is about uh, providing the technology in order to be able to implement those kinds of business cases. Uh, 
Um, but to achieve that, organization may still have a number of questions uh, regarding <clears throat> um, um, operating eventually a data exchange environments, whether it's called data marketplace or data hub um, or, data, data, or data exchanges. Um, and therefore, we're also providing expert advisory, ser advisory services um, in, in order to help those organizations um, uh, define and implement uh, and execute on uh, uh, compelling uh, um, and eff eff effective um, uh, data exchange strategies. Um, there are questions being raised, and therefore we're helping address those questions um, um, in, a, in a logical way. Um, each of those questions, um, which are um, uh, sometimes technology questions, sometimes business, sometimes legal, regulatory uh, questions, are important in order to set up some, um, some, some strategies, which can vary, as I said, uh, about between those each organization. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, in terms of the solution, the data exchange platform that DAWEX is providing, um, it's uh, it's providing a, a, a real and complete uh, governance and uh, model that's being supported. Uh, it's key, and I'll uh, highlight and, and zoom on this, but to provide the level of control to the participants of a, a data exchange ecosystem, um, uh, whether it's the data providers, the data acquirers, or those who are operating those uh, exchanges, um, the level of control, the level of security, but also traceability is essential uh, when talking about sharing and exchanging data um, and uh, addressing also non-technical element, business element like how uh, the, all the terms and conditions that are required in order to make uh, data transactions uh, and it's being done through licensing agreement. Uh, but there are also uh, regulatory uh, elements to take into consideration. And this is also part of the solution uh, to, uh, um, that DAWEX is offering um, to address uh, the compliance element uh, of uh, the equation. Uh, the solution is fully configurable, as I said, every implementation is unique uh, because it can address uh, uh, people in the agriculture sector, in the space industry, uh, governments, private organizations, in the retail, automotive, etc., etc. And it needs to be configured in a way that uh, it is um, uh, really meeting the requirements of those organizations, those requirements being either business related or technology related. So it's a fully configurable uh, environment. And it's also supporting various um, data exchange business models. When exchanging data, whether you are a provider or an acquirer, when um, you are operating exchange, there must be a business model behind uh, and this business model can be, I'm paying an access fee to access such a marketplace. Uh, I, as, as a orchestrator operator of an exchange, I'm going to charge uh, maybe also um, uh, a commission on transactions taking place on the exchange that I operate and for which I'm offering services to various participants. I can have different kind of business model where I'm providing free access or there are uh, different, uh, and it can be a combination of this. So being able as a, as a technology to, to, uh, for all the participants to provide the, the functions to, to define and manage those different business models is a key element of the, of the offering. Um, platform can be configured. Um, it's uh, on different front um, uh, with a brand identity, which can be um, uh, completely specific to an organization launching a data exchange platform environment. All about marketing and messaging. Uh, technology is one thing, but we need to also provide a good marketing, good messaging to the participants throughout the the, the, uh, the all the interactions that take place on, on, on the platform. This is completely configurable. 
Um, it's also the fact that, as I was mentioning, uh, the agriculture agriculture sector or this uh, um, aerospace or spatial um, uh, industry, they are using different languages, different jargons, different concepts. And therefore, at the various parts of the platform, needs to be able to configure different taxonomies. Um, um, it's um, that's also being provided by by the by, by the platform, and also because data exchange is something that takes place everywhere on on, on the planet. Um, some uh, of our customers in various geographies need to have also a platform that is localized um, with the regional parameter, not only the language, but sometimes also other elements that uh, that's specific to certain culture, certain region uh, in terms of the way they're working. Um, the business model, I mentioned it, being able to, to, to model that, to define um, the fact that on the licensing element uh, and on the legal element, uh, uh, the, the, the licensing agreements, the platform ables to use preset licenses that are uh, provided typically by the orchestrator to these participants um, of, the, of the marketplace that can be reused as such but they can be con fully configured by the participants in terms of territory covered by license, uh, the durations, the, um, the, um, uh, the, the fact that uh, there are some sub-licensing uh, clauses included or, or not, and how many different um, uh, ways to configure uh, licenses which are offered by the platform. And from a technical perspective, being able to implement the platform um, on the cloud infrastructure with uh, multiple possibilities uh, for uh, implementing the, the, uh, and running the platform. It's, it's uh, the technology is cloud provider agnostic. So it will actually, uh, uh, it can be hosted on all major US and EU uh, uh, players. Um, and also the participants, they will have the choice of uh, storing their data uh, in different ways and exchanging their data in different different ways. So that's part also of the flexibility of the solution. Sometimes the data will flow uh, through the platform, sometimes outside. We call that managed mode or distributed mode. And they can be. They can decide where physically the data are residing, which may be important, um, um, depending on regulations, depending on performance, depending on different criteria uh, that uh, um, that are important. So very flexible in the way also the the the, the, the technical infrastructure is being is being defined. Um, let me zoom a little bit on the scope and where the scope of a data exchange platform, such as the one that Dell X is, is dis distributing. Um, what it covers and how it fits into a more global view of the uh, data value chain. As you can see, and you know, uh, data can come from various sources, um, uh, whether it's satellite data, industrial data, business data, um, a number of things can be done on those data. There's different processes um, uh, that are going to um, uh, process uh, the data and prepare the data before it's being exchanged. And on the right side, uh, those data being acquired, um, they're also going data and or insights because they can be in different forms. It can be more like raw data or refined data or insights. They will go into dashboards, into analytics tools, uh, data science applications, and so on, uh, in order to serve um, um, different use cases. And sky is the limit there. The number of use cases uh, that can actually leverage some data, uh, which sometimes comes from a completely different industry sectors, um, uh, but still very in, important, interesting in delivering certain use cases. Um, at the center, you have this blue box, which is really the scope and the perimeter of what data exchange is. And let me just zoom a little bit on that. Um, basically, the data exchange platform will 
make the data supply and the data demand meets so that they can, in a, in a trusted and, and secure environment, uh, in order uh, for those parties to conduct trusted data transactions. Um, so trust is, uh, is key, traceability is key, um, uh, the compliance element, because this world of data sharing data exchange is increasingly regulated and it needs to be um, secure. These are some of the key uh, elements of a data exchange platform. And it means that it has to address the four pillar that we see, which is the technical exchange, the licensing element, the business model, and the compliance. Four, uh, four pillars of trusted data transaction. That's really the focus of a data exchange environment uh, as, as we see it. The fact that it's uh, very clearly separated from the other boxes I was showing in the major, uh, in, the, in, in the complete data value chains is very important, separating the data exchange from data storage and data processing. We, we, we get that also when looking at some of the new regulations like the Data Governance Act, which is clearly specifying the need for separating what is related to providing data exchange services from processing the data. Um, and we don't have the time to go deep into that uh, subject, but anybody would be interested could um, get back to us and we can continue the conversation on some of these uh, topics more, more precisely. Uh, let me, what I'd like to do now is to explain a little bit why um, organizations are engaged in data sharing, data exchange initiative supported by a technology like a data marketplace uh, or a data exchange or a data hub, whatever you call it. And here I will show in different examples, the various, the most, uh, um, the, the use case that we see the most and that we, for which we have implementations ongoing. So you'll see the data exchange platform. Company A is our customer. Um, of DAOX. He's also orchestrating that data exchange environment um, and uh, it operates uh, as a custom, uh, uh, fully configured um, uh, data exchange platform, which has a certain name here, Company A Data Exchange Platform. And then you have all the other participants, B, C, D, F, G, that are either data provider and or data acquirers. So the first use case uh, is where w the organization A is launching and operating an exchange for its own usage, where it's going to be the sole data acquirer and will connect with multiple data providers through an environment. And the, the objective here is really to streamline the data sourcing processing. Um, uh, especially in big organizations where you can we can have many different business units, they're also they're all sourcing data somewhere. There's not a single view of what's going on in the organization, which has an implication in terms of efficiency, but cost, but also in terms of the risk, uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, sourcing data, in, which would not be in a controlled way. So such platform. Uh, configured like that will help those organizations um, really um, be more efficient and cost effective in their data sourcing activities. If you look at the other way around, it can be that an organization realize it has lots of data, uh, they start managing it as an asset and they see the potential of sharing those data with number of organizations in different industry sectors who see the interest of using that data and often are prepared to uh, pay for that. Um, and uh, in that case, uh, the, the operator of the exchange and the sole supplier of, the, uh, of data is the company A. There's uh, other scenarios where the same company A um, that is distributing this data 
is also seeing the interest of opening up, if I could say, uh, the environment that they are operating and inviting certain specific organization. Uh, they will um, set the rules, I would say, uh, and invite them to, to come uh, with certain business terms. Um, um, it can be, um, as I said earlier, they can, they can monetize this uh, by uh, charging an access fee, by uh, taking commission on the transaction that may happen. But here, the company A is at the same time um, using the, the platform for its own uh, interest of, uh, for example, re generating new revenue stream by reusing its own data, but also providing data exchange services to other organizations. Um, of course, it's not going to be any type of organization. It will be consistent with certain certain goals that the company A has. Um, uh, it could be, for example, focusing on a sectorial uh, base. And earlier today, during the um, the panel session and, and before, um, Ludovic Codelupi from uh, uh, Mobivia and operating um, uh, After Eyes is actually in that position today, in this kind of scenario. Um, the other scenario is, a, is, is, is an interesting one where an organization decides to start a business of um, proposing data exchange services to numerous organizations, but is not itself neither sourcing or distributing data for its own um, uh, in, uh, purposes. Uh, so it's only providing data exchange services. You will find that in uh, vertical industries, in, for example, in the agriculture uh, sector, uh, one of our customers is actually operating an exchange um, uh, for providing those services to serve the European agriculture ecosystem, but is not uh, itself uh, distributing or sourcing data for its own business. Its business is operating an exchange Full stop. Um, the no, another example here uh, is where a few organizations here, A, C, and D, they want to collaborate um, on uh, a data sharing, data exchange uh, project for a certain goal and purpose. Could be, I don't know, for training uh, and AIs and models for certain specific goals. They want to share. Uh, data and and reap the benefits of the, the three organizations resulting from the work that they will be able to do thanks to this data sharing. But at the same time, uh, they can also invite other organizations in that uh, in that environment, and those other organizations may not see what they are actually doing in that specific project. So it's a, a little bit more sophisticated kind of implementation. Uh, with uh, closed or private groups that can be set up. That's also uh, uh, possible with um, uh, DOEX technology, data exchange uh, platform technology that can be used by those organizations. The future that we see to end up this, um, this point is that we see an additional benefits in the future of those uh, data exchange platforms, DEP for data exchange platforms, uh, that can be sectoral, that can be um, uh, regional uh, or more global, uh, they, they will eventually interconnect with each other, uh, providing a real network effect with a lot of benefits for all participants, whether a data provider, data acquirer, or data exchange uh, operators. So that's the future, how we see the data economy evolve in the, in the coming years. I will end up with um, a few uh, examples very quickly, um, um, referring to the, um, to the little scenarios that I showed in, in the past, in, in, previ in, uh, in the previous slides. Uh, this is an interesting uh, use case. Uh, it's a global trading organization in Japan um, that uh, um, it's called uh, Kanematsu. Uh, it's a global trading group uh, um, that has been trading physical goods for more than 130 years. 
And in the uh, food, grain, steel, motor vehicle, aerospace, electronic parts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, they have seen and, and they envision that the next uh, asset class that is going to be heavily traded in the future is is, da- is data. So, going from the brick and mortar business, they are they've launched a data uh, marketplace in Japan called Japan Data Exchange. Um, and which is operating our, on our technology. Um, another initiative here that is very interesting is uh, the Space Data Marketplace. It's a, a project supported by the French National Agency, the CNES, um, the equivalent of the NASA, uh, but in France, uh, supported by the French government also. And the aim is through a consortium, it's operating as a consortium for the moment, uh, uh, where you have the major players in the industry, the companies like Airbus, uh, um, Defense and Space, uh, Thales, um, um, you have Dassault with Dassault Systems, and a number of specialized comp- data, data company and, and innovative startups. Uh, the objective of this consortium is to provide a one-stop shop for spatial data and related service, and to re- to to provide an answer to uh, a, a growing need for having a simple way for accessing multiple sources of Earth observation data that comes from multiple uh, satellites and now constellations. Um, it's there's an an increasingly massive amount of data that is being produced on the one side. And on the other hand, there are so many use cases um, that can uh, leverage that uh, uh, Earth observation uh, data to address uh, in various industry sectors, whether in a few examples in agriculture or for tracking uh, greenhouse gas emissions or in digital twins uh, uh, initiative. In all those cases, there is, there is a match in terms of uh, the need to use or the ability, the ability to use um, um, sat- satellite data. So this, um, this, this marketplace uh, is um, going to actually answer that, the, that need. There's another example with largest airport operators that launch a data marketplace to federate the airport ecosystem. Multiple players in these industries, uh, from um, uh, hotel airlines, uh, retails, uh, transportation, public services, and so on. Uh, objective to share and exchange data in that in, this, in that in that industry. Um, in the agriculture, um, uh, you have Ag Data Hub, which is um, an operator is positioning itself as an operator of a data exchange, but also consent management uh, solutions. Um, and uh, they serve already more than 1,000 organizations in, in, in the industry. They're configured to operate at really at scale, with capacity load of 13 million requests per hour, only to exchange genetic data on animals. Um, and uh, interesting on this um, initi- particular initiative is that um, um, Ag Data Hub has been um, chosen to be the uh, Gaia X Lighthouse project, uh, which is kind of a, a reference project uh, that is dedicated to agriculture sector, uh, implementing uh, the trust framework and the um, and, and the reference and aligned to the reference architecture that Gaia X has defined. So Ag Data Hub is leading on that front, and that's a very a very interesting uh, interesting use case. And last but not least, uh, um, but you you had a, a discussion earlier, so I will not spend a lot of time here. Um, uh, Ludovic Codelupi uh, spoke about it, but um, um, Mobivia, uh, which is a, a leading multi-brand vehicle maintenance and equipment retailer, um, they actually using our technology um, and uh, not only they are distributing their own data, um, through this uh, platform that has uh, named after Rise, but they also have a strategy uh, to position themselves at the center of an ecosystem and, and, and be a key player um, for uh, providing data on, um, on this uh, aftermarket uh, uh, and 
car out of the market, but more globally on the mobility space. And uh, you can refer to the sessions where uh, Ludovic has, has spoken, who speaks um, in better than me on on this uh, on this whole thing. So thank you very much. Um, obviously, you can reach out to me anytime. You have my email address here if you want to continue the conversation and uh, if you have any question on this subject. Thank you very much.